set this up fast. Drunk Guys, DFW.net, ladies and gents. That's awesome. Wow, I can't turn down the music. I forgot where it's at. All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, trailer size does matter. It is Ricardo, Junk Guys, DFW.net, home of the best junk removal service in just my area, which is like a five mile radius here in the Fort Worth area. All right, guys, let's get into it really fast. I wanna talk about why trailer size does matter. It matters, trailer size matters in the business world, in the bedroom, size matters. It, it matters a lot, dude. Uh, and I wanna talk about that, okay? First of all, uh, let's start this from the beginning. Let's welcome any people that are gonna come into this room right now. Let's just welcome anybody who's in here, guys. Uh, six viewers so far here on the Facebook great, uh, <coughs> page. I just wanna say hi. If you're live with me, uh, just welcome yourself inside the bedroom, guys. Go ahead and hit the, hey, I'm here. Happy Thursday, happy Thursday, guys. Let's talk about how many jobs I had on this wonderful weather of a day. It was 75 degrees outside. It was absolutely gorgeous outside today in the DFW area. I had a record day of jobs, a record day, over 29 jobs that I did not do today because it was miserable. Actually, there was a bad rainstorm. It was absolutely horrible outside, guys. I want to make that clear, horrible, okay? The day was ugly. Junk DFW, what's up? What's up, guys? Okay, let's talk about this. Uh, trailer size does matter. 10 people in the view. If you're on the chat room, go ahead and say hola, guys. How are y'all doing tonight, guys? Hello, everybody. Jason Lane, I'm watching. What's up, man? How y'all doing, guys? If you want to ask me any questions that I'm about to get into right now, you're welcome to because I am the professional at junk removal. You know, um, Alpha Junk Calling, what's up, man? How you doing? 87 in Florida. It was actually 22 degrees today, and I worked this many jobs today. I absolutely did no jobs today. Uh, the whole city has shut down today. We, when it gets cold in Texas, we shut down because we don't know how to handle it. Oh, to totally wholesome. Totally wholesome. Well, totally wholesome. Thank you, Jason Lane. Herrera Holling, I don't know. Where you were today, dude, but it was 20. It, it was beautiful today, Herrera. It was 75 degrees here in the Fort Worth area. It was beautiful, brother. It was absolutely beautiful. I did 32 jobs. All these 42 jobs that I did today were very, very easy, guys. It was beautiful. The more you fit in a trade, the more money you make, the more jobs you can do it today. <laughs> okay, hold on, HP Progressive. Let me do this, man. You're taking my spirit away. All right, so I'm gonna get into it really, really fast, guys. Uh, trailer size does matter. So when I started my junk removal business about 12 years ago, I owned a Dodge 3500 Econoline van, and I was charging, let me tell you something, I was charging $250 totally full. That was 12 years ago. It actually held about 11 cubic yards of unwanted junk. As I grew my business, I knew that I would need something eventually bigger, a trailer that could hold more trash, of course. Um, so then I bought a 12-foot trailer, and I used this trailer for about six months, and that's when I realized that actually this 12-foot trailer held as much as my original van did. It held about 11 cubic yards. They both evened out at that rate. Um, then again, a few months later, I realized and I knew that the best decision for my business was to get a bigger trailer that could hold more trash. So then I purchased a 14 foot trailer and then I started charging $300 for a full load. You know, if you're realizing you ran into this problem when you first started out, first started out I totally understand. I know where you're coming from. This was something that was beating me up for months, I'm telling you. Um, almost a whole year. I was debating what size, how much to charge, how much I can charge. I want you to know that I've been there before and I went through all this. I, I, I spent money, I spent time not knowing the correct setup for my business. 
You know, nowadays people will tell you what size to buy, what size and how to charge, and what to charge depending on the size of your trailer. It gets complicated, it gets expensive, so I'm here to tell you what happened to me and maybe you can take my story and run with it and understand what I'm talking about. So I will tell you, the Econo line that I had was given to me by my father. As I grew my business, I was able to purchase the 12 foot trailer and it cost me $2,500. And then after a few months later, I spent an additional $4,000 on a 14 foot trailer. Either of these three vehicles was the setup that I was looking for to grow my business. Sadly, I knew that I had to get a bigger trailer eventually, a trailer that could hold more trash, a trailer that was light, a trailer that could move faster and be more efficient for my business. At this point, I realized that margins were important and every single dollar that I could save was for my business and was important. I had, I had already spent money, I had already spent time, and I was making money, honestly. But I knew I could make more money as my business was growing. I wasn't adapting to my business, and financially it was hurting me. Sometimes I felt like I was spending more money on vehicles and trailers than I was actually making money, if you understand that. Evictions. Hoarder homes, uh, huge cleanouts. Honestly, at one point, I started to pass on these big jobs just because I didn't have the correct trailer size to make the right margins for my business. It was embarrassing. I would show up with a small 12-foot trailer and tell the people, hey, I'm going to do a hoarder house. I'm going to pull out of this home 15 times. Can you believe that? Imagine me going to the landfill 15 times at $60 a pop, do your math on that. Now, again, I was just starting out, I didn't have five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 in the bank also, okay? I was going week to week on that point, at that point. Having the smaller trailer made me go to the landfill more often and spend more money. Not only that, I was spending more fuel, and I was going to the landfill, of course, I was spending more time at the landfill. So that's when I decided to give it another chance. I bought a 16 foot trailer and that was the correct size for me. It held over 29.5 yards. This was 12 years ago when I was charging $400 for the full load. It's a price that I still have till this day 12 years later, believe it or not. My trailer size is eight foot tall, 7.5 feet wide, and 16 foot long. It actually holds 30 cubic yards of trash and I only charge $400. And I know a lot of people are saying, wow, I'm cheap, I'm, I'm bidding too low. I'm not charging the correct price for the Metroplex for my area, and that's great, that's your opinion. I appreciate you thinking like that. But I'm going to tell you, if you have a 16 foot trailer, and it holds close to 30 cubic yards, and you're charging more than me, the customers know that. It is a, com it is a proven fact that 70% of people that call for junk removal will call three companies before they actually select one. So imagine, most of the time I'm going to win most of these estimates in my area. Why? Try to understand this. Because see, customers only hear two things, and that's the price and the size. The funny thing about it is that most of my customers aren't even going to fill up my trailer. So I'll charge them according to, to actually how much they feel of my trailer. But just because of my price and the size of my trailer, it puts my foot right in the door and not my competitors. Does that make sense to any of y'all? Okay. So I want to make myself clear. Just because my price is cheap and the size of my trailer is big, that's why the customers actually call me out to do the job. They're never, they weren't, their intentions weren't ever going to fill out my trailer. They just went with a cheaper price knowing that I would charge them accordingly. 
Here's one thing. 80% of my jobs are not full trailers. 80%. So that means out of 10 jobs, eight of them are not going to fill up my trailers. That means they're less than $400. And 90% of the time, I fill up my trailers with over $1,000 worth of junk. Does that make sense to you? So I want you to think about that. If you're charging too much for your trailer, for some reason, consider charging or changing the price or getting a bigger trailer. Because ultimately, customers know when you're charging too much. Because why? They're going to call competitors. They're going to call two other companies other than yourself. Most of the time, I'm hoping that I'm the last person because I always win the bid. Three things that I always use to my advantage when I'm doing an estimate for my trailer to go out there or to even win a job. Three things. The first is king and that's going to be pricing. The second thing is the size of my trailer and the third thing, third thing same day service or next day service. Ta-da. All right, guys. So I want you to think about what I said. You're, if you're welcome to ask me any questions about how um, I've got to this reasoning. In, in 12 years, I have not changed my pricing. And I don't think I'm going to. It's just so many companies out there are charging so much. HP Progressive Construction says, have you priced in fuel costs in the job bidding process? You know... HP Progressive, at this point of my business, think about it. If you're going to nickel and dime every single thing and your margins aren't that great. So for instance, let's take this consideration, HP, HHP, I'm sorry, Progressive Construction. Let's consider this. Let's say every little dollar that you spend, including your glass, makes or breaks your margins. So let's consider your trucks are not paid for. That means you have full coverage and you're paying full coverage on insurance. Your trailers aren't paid for. So you have a truck payment, you have a trailer payment, a dumpster payment, and you're paying full coverage on insurance. Those are three bills that totally eliminate me. I don't have those bills. But let's go to four and number five. Number four, something a lot of people don't think about is that none of my leads, none of my leads are paid for. People actually see me with my organic marketing, if that makes any sense. Okay? So I'm not paying for leads. Number five, most of all my trucks that are in my fleet, okay, are diesels, which are better than gas trucks when it comes to fuel. I save so much money on those other four things, Progressive, that I'm not really thinking about gas hurting me financially. Does that make sense? <coughs> Since I'm also dumping most of my trash, most of my small jobs into my bigger trailers, and then only making loads at the end of the week, it's saving me on dump fees, multiple dump fees also. For instance, I think it was Monday. Monday I ended up with like four to five jobs. These were small jobs. I think the equivalent of these small jobs came out to be $800. I was able to get trash out of those dumpsters. Uh, I mean, out of that trailer. Some of the trash was resellable, so I made money on that end. I also moved most of that trash. Actually, most of that trash was resellable stuff. A lot of office chairs were in there. And you know, office chairs just take up a lot of room because you can't really break them down. Office chairs, a desk or two, those were resellable items. As a matter of fact, the rest of the trash, I was able to load it into my other trailer and empty that truck out for the next day. So there was no dump fees. That's the way, Progressive, that I don't have to really add fuel costs to the jobs because I'm already charging so cheap. And my bidding process 
is I have so much room to work with. Those are four bills just right there that I can mention that a lot of people have. So that's how I can now. Junk DFW, if you have more than one GMB, can you list the same website? Yes, you can. Um, you can list the same website, Junk DFW, but here's the problem. I wouldn't do that. Stop being proactive. Be active. If you have enough time to turn on Netflix, if you have enough time to pick up a beer and drink it, then you have enough time to build another website. Okay? So, Junk DFW, what I'm trying to tell you is that be proactive when it comes to your business. If you're thinking of having another GMB and using your girlfriends or your wives, ex-wives or whatever, whatever you're thinking of doing or your mom's address for a Google My Business, you have to change everything. The pictures, the video, the uploads, all the information that you put in there, you have to change it. Most of the time, I change the phone numbers even. So, if that helps me out. Herrera Holly, I... I fuck, what do you say? I know Vaseline myself on a pole vaulting pit junker bowl. Um, so I have no idea, Pat Herrera, what the hell you're talking about. That's funny. But I want you to realize that saving money on the smallest things can make a big difference to your business. I, I recently posted another video uh, just the other day about dumping inside a trailer in a big trailer to save money. Listen, guys, I'm out here. I'm not selling you anything. I'm not. I, I, I rarely come out here to sell anything. Uh, I'm here to help the small businesses excel. Because our enemy, our our competitor is not me. It's not me. It's not Herrera Hauling. It's not TNT Junk Hauling. It, you know who it is. It's going to be companies like 1-800-JUNK, Junk King, College Hung Solid and Junk. Those guys average way more jobs than I do. The more smaller business that I can bring in and help out, the more businesses that they, and jobs that they will stop doing. These 1-800 junks were notorious, notorious years ago for going bankrupt, filing, you know, declaring, going out of business. I'm going to tell you, we have put a big dent on these companies. 1-800 junk got big because 12 years ago, when I started Junk Removal, there was nobody competing about, against these guys. All of us together now compete against the big box franchises. We put a lot of damage. I mean, just in the last few years, they have changed how they do estimates. They've lowered single item pricing. They are now even going out and doing next day service. So that's a big deal. We have affected the way they do business. Alex Vinova, what's up, dude? What's up, man? He, he's a big old follower on my channel. That's great. Uh, F-350 and Ram 3500 are hard to find at a good price and in general. <sighs> That's a great question. Alex, the price for used vehicles has soared over 26%, and I do not see when it's going. I do not see when it's slowing down. I cannot... Um, see the future of pricing on something like that. But I will tell you this, that it, eventually we both know, we both know that the pr pricing of used vehicles and new vehicles will eventually level out, okay? Uh, but you're also going to see a lot of people giving up on their vehicles. A lot of people who got these loans, um, who got these PPL loans, who got these... Uh, EIDL loans, who also got these funds from the government just to help them out. You're going to see a lot of people uh, that actually did this and went and got these loans and now they've ran out of that money and can't afford that truck. Um, so I want you to kind of understand that part. Uh, eventually, there's going to be more trucks out there. Uh, as soon as the chip shortage comes into effect, you're gonna notice that a lot of these people will, uh, these companies will have more vehicles on the property and they'll stop buying these used vehicles. The price of used vehicles will go down, okay? I, I think, uh, and you know, I, I, this, this is kind of not relating to your question, Alex, but uh, in 2020, uh, about late 2020, when COVID was hitting hard and it was hitting hard, um, it, it was the middle. 
I think it was around August I posted a video and I was doing a live video because everybody was at home, really. I posted a live video and I did a video about COVID, how COVID has affected business and the future of junk removal. I predicted that COVID was going to help us out tremendously, okay? I predicted that COVID was going to excel junk removal into another plethora, another level of, I'm talking about, it was going to excel. And that's exactly what happened. If you see the video I posted a while back, it's a live video that I did. I was talking to people and I told them and I predicted, and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why really, really quick, okay? Why I predicted it. It's not because I'm smart. It's not that. It's not because I've been in this business for 12. Well, it's it's not because I've been in this 12 for 12 years and, and got listen, it's nothing that I'm gonna tell you why. When September 11 hit, what, what, almost 20 years ago? What is that, 20 years, something like that? When September 11 hit, the economy took a crash. It crashed. We went into a recession. Junk removal soared. That was the first time. The second time was when the housing market crashed about 10 years ago. Junk removal soared again. COVID hit this time. It's common sense that it was going to soar. I took a mathematical guess and I said in that video that people, junk removal owners, entrepreneurs were going to excel during COVID and we still are to this day. But I will tell you, and I'm predicting this, these loans have ended. The relief funds have ended. The IRS, the uh, the government, the treasury is not sending out any more checks for a while. And you're gonna see business slow down and it's gonna take a slight crash. We will not be excelling as much as we are right now, but we will still be climbing. So I wanna be able to tell y'all that. So if you have a chance right now, save your money. Save your money, it's gonna be important, okay? Question, Josh Pitts, how you doing, buddy? How you doing, man? Uh, tell me where you're from, man. Tell me where you're from. Quick question, Corporate Junk King here does 800 for a full load, which is just ridiculous. If my trailer is half the size, should I be charging 400 or less, currently 300? It seems consumers are price sensitive when a, when a tweaker will charge 120. Okay, Josh, uh, that's a great question. Excellent, excellent question. I'm glad that you asked that question. Guys, by the way, if you have any more questions, please hit me up below. I'm not gonna stay on here like I usually stay for hours. I don't know how long I've been on this thing for yet. 23 minutes, I might stay here only seven more minutes. Uh, Josh Pitch from Chico, California. Josh, go ahead and tell me your name of your company, okay? Tell me the name of your company. I'll, I'll say it really fast. Uh, but I appreciate you asking that question. I have a perfect answer for you. answer for you. Uh, first of all, Josh, I cannot compete with Junk King, okay? In other words, you, Josh, cannot compete with Josh, uh, Junk King. We don't have the Pitts removal. Pitts removal out of Chico, California. Josh Pitts, the owner. We cannot compete with Junk King. We cannot compete with 1-800-JUNK. So I first want you to be sure that everybody realizes that. All the small business, we do not compete. Listen, in the DFW area, I'm probably the biggest junk removal service around. 12 trailers, five trucks, two employees, two to three employees. I'm going to tell you, we do, over, we do a lot of junk. I do not put a dent on 1-800-JUNK or Junk King. You want me to tell you who puts a dent on them? All of us combined. We beat the living heck out of them. Me and Herrera, me and TNT Junk Removal, me and All Junked Up, Michelle Hill, me and Renegade Junk Removal, us guys all together, we combine and beat them up. And that's why we don't charge as much as they are. And that's the reason, Josh, you cannot charge as much as them. Okay, Josh, so you say Junk King, for a full load does $800. Junk King holds about 20 cubic yards, if that's correct, right? 
Uh, how big is your trailer? That way I can kind of relate to it. And then I'll just keep on talking about this. Your trailer is half the size. Should I be charging 400? Yeah, I think you should be charging $400. If my trailer is half the size, oh, your, char your trailer is half the char size of their, no, no, I'm sorry. I didn't understand that part. Um, I think you should be charging $300, Josh. Do not compare your business to a junk king, because why? You're not junk king. And, okay, they're 15 yards, and you're 7.5. Exactly, 7.5. Customers know that. Customers know that. Josh, if you're getting away with $300, and you're making a decent living with it, Stay with it, brother. Do not compare yourself to 1-800 and Junk King. I, I hear this all the time. Oh, Junk King. <laughs> Josh, you know, people say this. People say this all the time. Oh, Junk King charges $575 here in the Dallas Metroplex. We're charging $500. What the heck? Dude, you're not Junk King. Uh, or, or I've heard people say, oh, 1 800 charges 600. We're charging 600. Josh, that doesn't make any sense. We're not any way close to being junking or 1 800. Okay? We're not close to there. We are the independent small entrepreneurs. Okay? You have a 5 by 10 four trailer. That means it's uh, four foot wide, five foot. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Five foot wide. 10 foot long, four foot high. You have a small trailer. Josh, when you, I'm gonna tell you something, Josh. I'm gonna tell you something. If you're looking to grow your business and you're looking to expand eventually to another trailer, you need to get rid of that trailer 100%. You need to get rid of that trailer. I'm telling you, save the money and buy yourself a bigger trailer. Get yourself a 16 foot trailer and I will tell you something, Josh. You will remember this video and it will help you transform the future of your business. And you think I'm playing with you, Josh, but that's what I did. I went from an Econoline van to a 12-foot trailer to a 14-foot trailer to a 16-foot trailer. And I'm telling you, I lived easier, I made more money, and I transformed the future of my business. That motivation that I took was one step away from growing my business and expanding. I have been in your shoes, Josh. I know what you're feeling. I know in your mind you're thinking, I'm gonna make a run. No, the investment is there. You will make more money. You think $300 a lot? Imagine charging $400 and having that extra $100 in your pocket. It makes a difference, okay? Um, let's see, I try to have employees on payroll like they do. Okay, let's go to the next question. OG Skims. What's up? I just bought my first enclosed trailer. Best decision I ever made. What's up, OG? Tell me a little bit more about your trailer, brother. Tell me a little bit more about your trailer. I'd love to hear. Tell me where you're from, guys. If you're in the channel right now and you're listening to this video, please tell me who you are. Tell me the name of your company. I have Josh Pitts from California right now. It's Pitts Removal. Ask a great question. Um, oh, thank you, man. Thank you. Much love, bro. Hey. Josh, even though we're dudes, we love each other. We're brotherhood, brother. We have to be able to unite as a team. Listen, and I challenge other cities. I challenge cities all the time. You know, I didn't. There's people that do YouTube videos across the spectrum of this channel, these channels, and they tell you how to make a thousand dollars, how to make ten thousand dollars, but. There's only one, one state, and that's Texas, that unites junk removal services like we do here. Our entrepreneurs, our owners of junk removal unite as teams. We have come together as groups to do huge jobs. I share my jobs with these companies. I cut my expenses. I cut my dumping fees. I cut my gas fees by helping other people grow their businesses. By giving them parts of my business and paying them a fair wage. I challenge companies in California who have YouTube channels. Companies, uh, you know, in, in New York and Florida that have YouTube channels that talk the talk. They talk the talk, but they sure don't walk it, don't they? 
They will show you that. They will show you the brotherhood that we have in Texas. And I think that is hurting the junk removal community. I honestly think... I, I saw a video just recently, just recently, and let me tell you, I know you saw it also, about a young fella who started a junk removal service. And he has all these trucks, all these trailers, and he's doing $1.5 million in sales. Have you seen that video, guys? Do not let this video hype you up. I have personally talked to this person. Two weeks ago, this gentleman called me. I don't want to mention the name of the company because I get hundreds of people call me on a monthly basis asking for advice or just asking for help. And I'm going to tell you this one person called me and asked me a question. And this question was a total surprise to me. Okay? He told me he makes over $1.5 million a year in sales. Five trailers, 24 employees, a call center, this and that. And I, mean, I was like, oh, that's great. And how old are you? He told me his age. And I was just totally blown away with this. Then he told me the bad part about it. Looks can be deceiving. And I'm here to show you, to tell you, to nurture you and walk you through the disillusion, the illusion, the David Copperfield magic show of how people say things on channels and you can't believe them. I want you to listen to this story. $1.5 million, five trucks, 24 employees, a call center with two people. And I'm going to tell you. Okay. His margins are 10%. You do not have to be a mathematician to figure out how much he makes on a yearly basis. I'm going to tell you, just off the top of my head, if he makes $1.5 million and his margins are 10%, then hallelujah, Jesus Christ, can anybody in the chat room tell me how much he really made? I was totally surprised when he told me that his, his average, let, let me tell you, he pays Google ads over $250,000 a year. He paid JRA over $45,000 a year. He pays Home Advisor, Trip, uh, Yelp, Thumbtack, a little over, get this, $280,000 combined. Over half of a million dollars goes only into leads. <laughs> Five trucks, none of them are paid for. They're all full coverage. One truck, $1,100. So do your math on that, $1,100. That means out of all the five trucks, there's a $5,500 payment that he's got to make that's not including the insurance on these vehicles, okay? So we're going to assume his insurance is another $300, $400 per vehicle. Listen, the numbers don't add up. My question to him was this, and I was joking around when I started talking to this young fellow. I said to him, listen, so you're telling me you made over $150,000 profit? And he said, no, 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 no. I said, wait a minute, before you tell me anything, buddy, does this affect your cost when your vehicles break down? And he goes, well, that's not really added to it. How about like the maintenance to these? Oh, well, that's not really added to it. How about your apartment or your home you live in? How about the food you eat? Is that added into it? And he said, no, not of that. So I'm just going to think that you have about $3,000 in the bank. He told me no. I was like, oh, I stand corrected. And you know, it started going through my mind. Oh, he's got a lot more money than that. I mean, he made $150,000, 15% profit. Margins are 15%. $1.5 million. And this is what he said. I said, so you have about $3,000 in the bank. He said, no, I have 6,000. 
I said, excuse me? I have $6,000 in the bank is what he told me. I made $6,000 in the eviction the other day, pure profit. So are you telling me that in one day of work, I made more profit than you did the whole year? And he tells me, yeah, I saw that video. Plus, I love it, Ricardo. And I said, brother, I'm going to tell you what you're doing wrong. You have too many trucks. You have too many employees. And you're paying too much on leads. I gave him a solution how to fix it. And it's a, it was a really easy solution. When I saw the numbers, I, I, you know, he emailed me a few numbers. I did see the numbers. Everything that I'm telling you is 100% true. He emails me all the numbers and I look at the spreadsheet and I say, I can tell where your problem is. Do not be discouraged, ladies and gentlemen. When you hear a story like this of a young person running a business and you say to yourself this, oh wow, I'm 42 years old and I'm not where this 20 year old kid is or whatever, how old he is. I'm not even close to it. And you get down on yourself and you start thinking, wow, I wish I could be with him, like him. That's not it. I'm going to tell you what it is, guys. It's the fact that this kid doesn't know how to run his business and has gotten a hold paying for leads all the time. He has financially hurt himself. But the weird thing about it, he told everybody how his business is so promising. And then the JRA makes a great 30 second spot for him on the video and we believe him. I want to be honest with you guys because when you come on my channel, I tell you the truth. At least I try to get as close as the truth I can. I try to motivate y'all to grow your business to beat the big franchises and the big boxes. I give you tips, I give you ideas, I have free webinars, and in the next few months, I'm gonna do these f courses, these online courses that will help you build your business organic, to stop paying for leads, to stop letting Thumbtack take us over, Home Advisor, Yelp, to stop that and save money so our businesses can grow and we can defeat the big boxes. Because that's who our enemies are. That's who our competitors are. When you see another small junk removal service at a stoplight <coughs> or go by you on the highway, I want you to notice and I want you to realize he is not your competitor. He is your friend and him and you and the next guy and the next small entrepreneur will help us defeat the big boxes. And when we get there at one point, 1-800-JUNK and Junk King will not be able to hold this big old budget they have and they will fold. It might not be next year. It not be, might not be five years from now, but it will be soon. One day it will happen. I want to be able to let y'all know that this channel, when I first made this channel and I started speaking and preaching the word of junk removal, it was here just for fun as the business grew, as the YouTube business grew, as my business did. I wanted to help out because I knew that I would never catch 1-800-JUNK. My intentions weren't able to catch him. I never wanted to catch him. But I knew we could beat them and I thought, how could I beat them if I help out the small business entrepreneurs and that's the only way we could do it, okay? They look at my videos, trust me, they stare at me when I go to the landfill. They always see all my trucks there, it's fine. All right guys, um, pride in service, junk removal, I need all that information. I, uh, pride in service, you have my phone number, my phone numbers are in the bottom of every vehicle. I can, if you want to, if anybody who saw those videos of that fella, wants to talk to me personally, I will talk to you personally. I will tell you who it is. I will tell you details about it. But I want you to know that I want to keep his stuff private because he asked me to. Uh, I do not mention who he is. And I'm going to tell you, I get phone calls from everyone. Everyone across the United States. So if you saw the video, you might have seen it. If you didn't see the video, it might not be the right guy, okay? Um, let's see. Uh, Josh Pitts, I can build... 
WordPress websites, I was thinking of throwing a file together that I can sell other junk removal companies and set them up for set them up for the day about a thousand a pop. I want you to realize, Josh, that's not a bad uh, idea. The problem is $1,000 is very expensive for a newcomer. I think you should slash that price at $500. I know a lot of work that goes into websites, but unless the consumer, the, the entrepreneur, the small business owner is not feeding, feeding you information to help him grow the website, then you shouldn't even be doing it. I tell people, I had a guy recently from Las Vegas tell me he wants to open Las Vegas Junk Guys, Junk Guys Las Vegas. And I said, okay, brother, uh, yeah, it sounds good. Let's let's try to do this. And I, I'm trying to build more uh, small commission franchises across the U.S. Slowly, it's not something I really want to get into. Um, so if you're interested, yeah, I'm not really wanting to get into it right now. And he wants to open Junk Guys Las Vegas. And I tell him, well, I'll need this information. Send me this. And I was kind of testing the guy out. I said, I'll need pictures. In the next few weeks, I'll need pictures. I'll need stuff like that. I'll need, you know, this and that. And... and he never sends me anything. He calls me back in a week. He asks me, have you fit, completed the website? I said, dude, you haven't sent me anything. No, thank you. So I think if the customer doesn't want to commit a lot of information, Josh, don't even bother building them a website, okay? I think it's about committing to build with you and help you because just building a website is like having a car. Uh, it's like having a car in your front yard that you're selling, okay? You know it's for sale, but for some reason, you forgot to put a for sale sign in the front yard. That is a website. Unless you feed that website information, feed it content, give it and let it mature and nurture, feed it some water, and tell people that you're selling this car and putting it on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist, your car is never going to sell, okay? Josh Pitts, that sounds good. I couldn't do it for less than 500. I was thinking five to 600, but Said a thousand, hoping you'd say that. <laughs> Josh, you should talk to me because honestly, I can help you probably sell these uh, websites later on down the line. All right, guys, I'm going to end this video. I'm going to go get something to drink. The weather was bad. Uh, not drink, I'm sorry. Something to eat. Uh, me and my wife uh, are going to go get something to eat really fast, guys. So we appreciate, I appreciate everybody. I know she appreciates too. I appreciate everybody watching my channel, guys. Uh, I will be announcing pretty soon webinar number two, man. I can't wait. It's going to have so much information, so much encouragement, so much motivation. It's going to unite us junk removal services as one team. And I'm looking forward to announcing the date of the 2022 Junk Removal Summit. I can't wait for that too, guys. I'm looking forward to actually inviting people out to the property here in Dallas, inviting y'all out to eat giving y'all free food, well, not really, just feeding y'all and giving y'all free information about junk removal, organic marketing. I'm going to teach. It's going to be a big time deal, guys. Um, it is here in Dallas, Texas. It will be sometime this year, but if you're interested in it, hit me up, Gmail me, go ahead and message me on um, Facebook, and I'll get back to y'all about the date and time. All right, guys, don't forget, if you like these videos, subscribe to the right side. On the left side, check out my other videos. By the way, I've posted a lot of videos in the last, oh man, in the last three or four days, I've posted tremendous amounts of videos. I think there's six or seven videos I put out there. It's my daily, what I do, man, you know, a lot of people get home and they're done. I don't. I get home and edit videos. It takes me three to four hours just for one video, guys. So imagine the time I'm, I'm, I'm spending to edit these videos for y'all, guys. Don't forget, guys, subscribe. Bye-bye. Have a great night, man.